everyone. Welcome back to the 6-5 Summit. Excited for this next session that we have. Asan Al-Khuri. Asan is the CEO, president of OnSemi. Asan, I want to welcome you to the event. It's been a great day so far. I can't wait to have this conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, we've got a big... Uh, you know, number of items related to AI that people are focused on. But one of these big items that maybe needs more attention, doesn't always get the attention, should get more attention, is the electrification, power management requirements. You know, I'm reading um, reports out there that show in certain regions, you know, data center power or available, available energy for data center is reaching near zero. We are parts of the world where, you know, uh, the uh, demand for AI and the scale of data center build outs to do AI, not to mention the edge electrification of vehicles and all these things that you play in are all going to be utilizing so much energy. And yet I don't hear us talking about as much. I hear us talking about building larger models, trillions of parameters and, you know, putting AI in every device and every phone and every PC and more in the data center, new data centers. Just give me the quick background kind of, you know, this is something you're really focused on it on semi how are you guys thinking about this problem right now? And how big of a problem is this? So I'll start by saying it is a big problem. Uh, you hear uh, a lot of the headlines. All the focus is how much consumption is for these GPUs and, and uh, uh, systems that are coming out. But nobody's talking about, okay, that's all great. Now what? Uh, now that's on the cloud perspective. Now add to that this train on the grid already from electrification uh, uh, that as you add more and more vehicles on, on the road, you're going to have that intensity that add on top of that, you know, areas or times in, in the year where the grid, whether it's air conditioning or cooling, uh, uh, larger, uh, uh, facilities becomes a, even more strained. So all of these combined are creating a power crunch. Uh, now what, what do we do about that? There are two sections, uh, uh, for it. You can think first on how do we get power to the building, right? That's kind of the uh, the first thing that's grid related. There are a lot of technologies that we're involved in, and I'll go a little bit in that. And then when you get into the building, how do you best utilize it? That's where the efficiency comes in. What we look at from an on-site perspective is what I call the sustainable ecosystem. Because all of them have to be related. It starts with energy generation energy distribution, energy consumption, whether it's an EV or cloud. All of these have to work together and all of them have to be developed uh, together if one were to sustain the other. Meaning, if you don't have a charging network or the grid is not ready, EVs are not going to be adopted. If you don't have renewable energy or energy grid that is supporting the AI deployment, the AI deployment is not going to be uh, uh, to the scope or extent we can do. So it's a ecosystem as we describe ecosystem interrelate. So getting into uh, the building, back to the first section of the prompt, you have technologies that we also participate in of energy storage system, where you bring the power close to the consumption site. And so you remove a lot of the intensity from the grid itself, like call it micro gridding. You still have to get the power there, whether renewable or, or grid power, but at least now you are in a proximity. Now, when you go in, that's where a, a lot of the semiconductor also comes in, which is, let me just put it in perspective, 1% efficiency or 1% improvement, which may not seem like a lot from a power perspective, can save enough energy to reduce by one terawatt hour for the year. I mean, just think about the extent of efficiency in, in power conversion, getting from grid all the way through the GPU, that 1% efficiency can deploy or be reused either to power homes or to power another AI center that is able to achieve the output that we need. Hassan, you know, I want to talk a little bit about power semiconductors in just a moment, but I did want to ask you is how much of a compromise do you see between getting 
power energy rights and and actually being able to proliferate these technologies, whether it's, you know, I mean, because we're at a very small percentage of, of electrification in terms of, you know, vehicles on the road. We're seeing it grow and it's been very positive, more new designs, new new entrants, new participants and exciting, uh, exciting, you know, uh, versions of these cars that people are actually really, you know, people that maybe weren't even thinking about electrification are like, wow, that looks great, drives great. It's all getting in the right direction. Same time, I hear this insatiable appetite that's going on in the market for next generation uh, transformer models, LLMs, and not to mention like other AI, which we've forgotten about, but that is really important to doing a whole lot of different tasks. Can we balance this? Like, is your take, is, is this something that can be achieved? Because it's kind of been odd to me how we were very focused on sustainability. And then all of a sudden AI comes out and you're hearing a lot less about sustainability because it almost is a diametrically opposed force right now for the tech industry to try to manage carbon <laughs> and at the same time, execute on what customers want from AI. Yeah, I say, look, I, I don't think it's, it's one or the other. I think we can uh, uh, achieve both. The question, the variable here is time. It's not the level, meaning uh, uh, how fast and we deploy these uh, uh, things because look, already the industry is and has been solving this problem of uh, renewable energy as a source to power, even for electrification of vehicles already. You know, I talked about microgridding. Look, we all know the grid is not gonna be able to support it as is. And if we sit here and talk about how the grid is going to be upgraded in order to support uh, uh, electrification and uh, uh, AI load, uh, probably not going to be in my lifetime. Uh, therefore, the industry is going about it a different way because of time. And therefore, the time is now, the consumption is now, AI happened very quickly. We're already on this trajectory that we need to accelerate. Now, from a grid upgrade perspective, that's what micrograding uh, uh, comes in. Now, whether you microgrid by having a power plant next to an AI center or a renewable uh, uh, energy capture that gets put on a uh, uh, energy storage system, that's also local. Again, you, what you want to get rid of is the distance. What you want uh, is, is the losses that you get. So you maximize energy generation to the energy consumption while minimizing losses because Again, I, I mentioned the example of 1%. 1% at every step of the conversion adds up to now you can have a bigger deployment with the same energy that uh, you are otherwise having. That is what we need uh, uh, to focus on. So I don't think it's it's one or the other. I don't think we have to sacrifice sustainability uh, uh, and, and the, the climate uh, initiatives because we need uh, and everybody wants, and it's very helpful to get the AI and, and the expansion of the LLM models and so on. So, so let's pivot for a minute here. And I appreciate you kind of running that down. I think there's different schools of thought. And given where your business is focused and handling is you are really trying to handle a load problem that a lot of these other, you know, other semiconductors are just, you know, they're all talking power, you know, and performance per watt. Those metrics haven't changed and they won't change. But, you know, when I hear Jensen talking about 72 black wells in Iraq, you start looking at the power consumption of one rack. And then you think about the scale of these systems. You're like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? So talk about power semiconductors and, and the role that you expect to play and what on semi is doing to sort of provide a pathway to not have to compromise between having the best capabilities and having world leading AI technology. Um, and also at the same time being responsible. And by the way, just managing the situation. I mean, there's part of it that's like wanting to do good. And part of it's just doing what we have to do to keep this tech proliferating at the same time while managing our grid, because I don't think you or I are going to be happy on a hundred degree summer day. If our air conditioning isn't working. Yeah. And by the way, the uh, uh, you can think about a rack requires as much power as an electric vehicle, a premium electric vehicle. Uh, we're talking in hundreds of kilowatts at this point. So to me, I look at it as a entity of consumption, whether it's a car or it's a rack at this point, because you have to, to do the uh, technology for the same. Now, how, what, from a semiconductor perspective, 
what are uh, uh, the uh, things we can do in order to help that. It goes back to the efficiency. Every, uh, I guess, every power unit that you don't waste from the entry to the rack to the GPU is a power unit that you can add for another GPU. That makes sense. If you say 100 a month, you can power another GPU. And therefore, and the efficiency is the primary metric. Uh, that's where we come in. That is at the base of the technology itself. Now, people talk about efficiency, and I've always talked about it, and even in the automotive domain, people think about, well, it's semiconductor efficiency, or, you know, call it wide band gap. It could be silicon carbide, and, or it could be uh, silicon. But that's not where efficiency only comes in from. You have to have the best technology at a die level. But if you don't have the proper packaging to dissipate that, uh, that uh, heat, you are going to lose efficiency even for the best semiconductor device sub. So I look at technology for power as both die and package. And you have to have both. You have to design both together so when they land on a board, you're not having any waste of, of energy that you save coming into the chip, but you waste into the, in the chip itself. You know, you save 1% from a technology, then you waste it in heat. Well, guess what? The output hasn't changed, therefore. You have to have both. We are heavily investing in both. That's for point number one. Now, there's a the packaging itself. Of course, it's very easy to say you can have a complicated package and have it large. But what happens on real estate? You know, those racks, you're, you're landlocked. Yep. And if you think about anything that's landlocked, real estate is very expensive. Yeah. So how do you maximize real estate with the power density? That's where you have, you know, packaging or constructs that help with that. Yeah, it's really interesting that you say that too, um, about the, you know, the power uh, and being landlocked, Masan, because, you know, it's a, it's a, we, I, I've talked a lot about how much power we can get to the racks and then the actual racks themselves. And by the way, then the power per rack are all going up by orders of magnitude. So as I sum this up, and we only have a minute left, I really appreciate you running me through this, is this is a substantial problem that it's not a problem that uh, it, it is, is not only looking for a solution, it needs a solution. We cannot do these two things at, at a different speed. We have to progress power management and building power semiconductors that tr deliver efficiency to these racks to these vehicles, to, you know, basically edge to cloud, to device at a really rapid pace. Because if we keep growing these models and we keep growing the the, the rollouts of these AI solutions and we don't think about power, we're going to come to the edge of this pretty quickly, yeah? That's right. That's right. And it's our responsibility, you know, as an industry, but also uh, for on semi as a leader in, in power semis. And you're seeing more and more products that we are coming out with, like our T10 MOSFET or the 650 volt silicon carbide. So both on silicon and silicon carbide in order to stay ahead of it. Because what we're working on now is the next generation of, of AI in order to get more out of the, the rack space that we get. Because look, racks has not, have not changed and didn't, didn't get bigger, maybe a little taller, but they didn't get bigger as far as, you know, width and, and uh, um, depth. And therefore, we have to fit more into it. And that comes at the core with technology that we're doing here at us. Don, I want to thank you so much for joining me here at this year's 657. I have a feeling that this is not the last time we're going to be talking about power when it comes to the you know, growth of the uh, overall data center industry, electrification of vehicles, edge to cloud solutions. I think in every part, you know, the power and uh, performance per watt metrics will not go away, but the need for innovation, like what you're doing at OnSemi to help deliver on the potential of these technologies is going to only become more and more important. And I can't wait to keep uh, in touch, to keep tracking, following, and providing our analysis of what you're doing. But so far, we're very impressed, Hassan, and uh, hope you'll come back and join us here again on the 6.5 or at next year's 6.5 Summit. Great. Thank you. All right, everyone out there, thanks so much for tuning into this session. We've got so much more for you. I'm going to send it back to the studio.